Hey guys, it's Hannah Hart's Book 6, and today I'm going to be talking about the top 5 cozy mysteries that you should read. If you've never read a cozy mystery before, I'll break it down for you. Okay, cozy mysteries usually have an amateur sleuth, a cozy companion, sometimes a love triangle. There are cozies about people that are realtors, people that are librarians, people that are people that are teachers, people that are bake shop owners, um, people that own soul, soul food restaurants. So honestly, cozies can be set anywhere. And cozies are, in my humble opinion, one of the best genres of literature because they are quick reads and they're usually multiple series. So if you love series, cozy mysteries are your genre because there are so many books in a series, usually upwards of 20 books in every series, and you get to follow the characters, and you don't have to read them in order, but it is fun to read them in order because you get to know the characters, and you get to know them more over time, and it's really, really fun. I think that about covered it. Here are my top five cozies that I think that everyone should read because I just love them. Okay, so the first book that I have to talk about is the book that got me into cozy mysteries and it is chocolate chip cookie murder by joanne fluke i first heard about this book because book nerd native or hannah on instagram she posted a picture of like the original cover of this book that's like yellow and has chocolate chips on it and i was like oh my gosh i have to read that book and so i put it on hold i finally got it in august of last year and i read it and i absolutely loved it this book is the first in the series. This series follows Hannah Swenson, and Hannah Swenson is a bakery shop owner. She owns the cookie jar where they make wonderful cookies, and I want to eat every single one of them, and there's recipes for the, cook for the cookies in the book, and it's so wonderful. But anyway, Hannah Swenson is an amateur sleuth, and in this book, she actually, this is where she becomes and discovers her sleuthing ability, but the guy who does her deliveries gets shot in his truck, and the last thing he was found eating was her chocolate chip cookie, so chocolate chip cookie murder, and she decides to investigate this murder. There's this new detective in town who does not want her to investigate, and his name is Mike, and then she has... Uh, another love interest named Norman and Norman is the town dentist and Norman is my absolute love um I have come to the come to the fact that um Hannah and Norman will probably never be together but Norman is my top pick for Hannah because he's so sweet and so wonderful and I just I like Mike better in the Hallmark movies than I do in the books which is actually saying something because I really don't like the Hallmark movies that much. The love triangle is very ongoing in this series. So if you don't love love triangles, this series might not be for you just because it goes on for books and books and books. And at some point it introduced another person and becomes a love square. And it's just, I don't think that Joanne Fluke knows whether she wants to give this um, love triangle up. I don't really like this cover because um, Allison Sweeney is not Hannah Swenson and Hannah Swenson is de described as very plump. She has very wild curly orange hair and it's often talked about that she can't find things that go with her orange hair. It's just wonderful to read from a main character who is not the typical size or the typical average size that we see everywhere on Instagram. Um, and she has two men falling all over her, so it's really cool. <laughs> the second book that I want to talk about is Murder with Fried Chicken and Waffles. And I know that I said the Chocolate Chip Cookie Murder was the book that got me into Cozy Mysteries, but this was the book that I loved before that book, before I even realized what Cozy Mysteries even were. I happened upon this book when it came in through processing at the community college library that I was working at. I saw this cover and I immediately had to read it because it was so cool 
and literally the food on this cover looks so scrumdiddlyumptious. This book also has recipes. But anyway, this series is the Mahalia Watkins Soul Food Mystery. The first one is Murder with Fried Chicken and Waffles. The second one is Murder with Macaroni and Cheese. And the third one is Murder with Collard Greens and Hot Sauce. I've read all three and they're so wonderful. And I desperately hope that A.L. Herbert um, publishes more books because he's wonderful. This series follows Mahalia Watkins. Mahalia Watkins is kind of in her like mid 40s to 50s and she has a soul food restaurant and her cousin Wayvon works there and Wayvon is kind of this like um wonderfully weird crazy um character she's hilarious and Wayvon is the waitress or one of the waitresses and she's not very good at being a waitress but she kind of just doesn't get fired because she's you know, related to the boss. But in this book, Mahalia finds the man who in helped invest in her restaurant dead in her restaurant. And her and Wayvon decide to move the body so that her shop does not um, get in the media and they don't have to close down. But this book is so hilarious, and honestly, every single book in this series is so funny. I reread these books, which is funny because, like, you don't usually reread mysteries, but I love these. I would definitely reread them a million times over. I recommended them to my mom, and my mom loved them. She, like, read a few lines up to my dad, and he thought they were hilarious. So, you definitely should read this series because. It's so wonderful, it's so easy to get into, and I absolutely love these books. The next book that I want to talk about is the book that I most recently read, and it is Sprinkle with Murder by Jen McKinley, and it is a part of the Cupcake Bakery Mystery series, and it's also the first one in the series. This book follows Mel, Melanie Cooper, and Angie Delora. Mel and Angie have been friends since they were kids, along with their um, oldest friend Tate and basically all three of them go into business together. Tate invests the money and Angie and Mel decide to open this cupcake shop called Fairy Tale Cupcakes. The book opens with Tate revealing to Angie and Mel that he has gotten engaged and Mel and Angie do not like his fiance. His fiance is just very rude. Her name's Christy and she is just very demanding, but she decides that she wants Mel to bake the cupcakes for her wedding. But Mel would have to make all of these cupcakes and sign away the rights to them and she can never make them again in her shop. And so Mel is struggling with this decision, but she decides to make the cupcakes anyway and decides not to tell Tate because she doesn't want to upset him or hurt his feelings. Mel goes to meet Christy and Christy, uh, Mel knocks on the door and Christy doesn't answer the door. Mel walks in and she finds that Christy is dead and the last thing that she had eaten was one of Mel's cupcakes. So the police begin to suspect that Mel killed Christy because she truly loves Tate. And this book was so good. Um, the twist at the end, I did predict who the murderer was. I usually can predict them because they're kind of predictable. But there was a twist in this that I didn't really see coming. And so that was really exciting. The next cozy mystery that I recommend that you read is not the book that I'm going to show you, but it's going to be the first one in the series. The second one is called Dim Sum of All Fears. And the first book is called Death by Dumplin', and it is part of the Noodle Shop Mystery Series. This book follows Lana Lee, who has recently, in a fit of um, crazy, she has quit her job and realized she still had bills to pay. So she goes to work at her parents' noodle shop called the Holy Noodle House. And during her shift one day, she delivers some dumplings to the man who owns the shops in the like 
shopping center and finds out later that he has been found dead because even though everyone in the shopping center knows that he has a seafood allergy, somehow he was given shrimp dumplings instead of his regular order of dumplings. And so it immediately um, turns the tables and the detectives think that either La Lana or the cook ended up murdering the owner. So Lana Lee has to become an amateur sleuth and figure out who murdered the owner of the shopping center. And this book was really, really good. I loved Lana's character, her voice and her attitude just like jump off the page from page one. She's just so fun and she solved the murders with her roommate too. And this book, um, Death by Dumpling, also had a twist that I did not really see coming. And it was just kind of like, it kind of blew my mind a little bit. So that was cool. Also, these books are by Vivian Chen. Vivian Chen is an Asian American author. It's always good to have own voices books. The last cozy mystery I want to talk about is Carbs and Cadavers by Ellery Adams. Carbs and Cadavers is a really fun book. And it's the Supper Club Mystery Series by Ellery Adams. So, the Carbs and Cadavers is the first in the series. It follows this man named James Henry. And James Henry used to be a professor at William and Mary. And he had to move home to take care of his reclusive father uh, because his mother has just passed away. The book opens and James steps on a scale and realizes that he has gained a lot of weight and he wants to try to lose weight. And so he works up the library now with his trusty library pals, Francis and Scott Fitzgerald. Yes, it's really their names. It's really fun. But anyway, a woman named Lindy comes into the library and she is offering up flyers to start up a supper club. And um, she wants to do it to lose weight. And so they're going to figure out a meal plan and she has three other members lined up, but they can't decide what diet to do. So James is going to be the deciding vote. So James goes to the supper club and we meet um, the other characters. And the other characters are Bennett, Jillian, Lucy Hanover, Lindy, and James. And they create the Flab Five. And they decided to, they decide to do a low carb diet. But during their first meeting, Lucy, who works at the sheriff's office, calls up the sheriff's office and nobody answers. And in a small town, when nobody answers the phone, it's usually a bad sign. So she heads to the sheriff's office and figures out that there's been a murder. And um, she heads over to the crime scene and so do the rest of the flab vibe, which is at the, bake the bakery in town and this guy who is 30 years old and still wears his leather jacket kind of guy, um, he is found dead in the bakery. And the Flab Five have to figure out who murdered Brinkley Myers. So honestly, this book was so fun. I listened to it on audiobook and I don't listen to many books on audiobook. And this series is just so fun. The characters are really awesome. Jillian's kind of like a hippie dippy lady and um, Lindy's a school teacher. Bennett works for the post office. Lucy is trying to, you know, become a sheriff. And James Henry is just kind of lost in his life. And he's just trying to, you know, figure out what to do. And he works at the library with a not a lot of funds. And it's just really fun to read about them and their supper club. It's just, they're really interesting. And I heard about Ellery Adams from Core Tagonist or Courtney on YouTube and I haven't read the series that she likes from her but I found my own series that I really like and I think that you should read it. So those are the top five cozy mysteries that I think you should read. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below. Have you ever read a cozy mystery? And what cozy mystery did you read? That's the end of my video. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.